ESPN First Take is presented by Bass Pro Shops. You say you made it, I can gauge if you did it. You're doing something right when Stephen A is your critic. And Skip Bayless going crazy as his opposition. They pulling up your statistics, now they got the world's attention. They just want to see, can your name be carried as a champion? Hey, Kerry Champion, I know a bad game will give me a bad name on the show for a day, but I love this game. See, I don't fear that, I play with my heart. You can find me where the cheers at, pointing to the 300s where the beers at, where I used to sit with the United Center where the Bears at. I don't fear that. Let's talk sports, it's that everyday barbershop conversation. They just break the ice with the statements. They talking numbers and character. We don't care about no carrot, diamond, or haircut unless it's your high top. Catch me with three stripes laced on my feet, right? Shooting corner threes and catching lobs. Jumped out from seat height. I'm going for the win, yeah, it's only for the win. Don't worry about my craft if you bleach your skin. This is first take for breakdowns of any play, any play, any team, any time, any day. This is first take breakdowns of any play, any player, any team, any time, any day. I don't believe this game is going over time. I'd say Cleveland 99, Golden State 91. Final score here at game three. The Cavaliers 96, the Warriors 91. First take, they were great. The record produced first. Check out that word play. They know it. I, I, uh, Skip Bayless, I feel like they deserve this celebration. They, they are do. two games away. Feasibly, just two games away. Uh, congratulations on your win last night. Thank you guys for showing up in the rain yep. to be here today. We appreciate you. Were they chanting Kerry or Delhi? I believe I it was De was it Delhi? Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Delhi. Or Kerry. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith, I'm Kerry Champion, and this is First Take. Thank you for being here. Uh, obviously, on the show today, we want to tell you who we have. Joe Hayden, your Cleveland Brown. Yeah. Uh, and uh, former teammate, two-time champion, Norris Cole, will be here. Of LeBron's, former teammate of LeBron's. He'll explain why LeBron is doing so well. He has some insight that we just don't know. Uh, Skip Bayless, did you want to address the crowd before we get started? <sighs> I want to get to the question because I can't wait mm. to talk about what I witnessed last night. What did you witness? witness. Oh, oh, I see the pun there. Yeah. All right. What about you? The fans came out to see first take. Yeah, let's get to I'll it. I'll do then. my talking then. All right, let's get to it then. All right. Uh, okay, so Cavs with the 2 1 series lead. LeBron with 40 points, ladies and gentlemen, last night to take his total to 123 points over three games. The Warriors never had a lead at any point in the game. The combination of LeBron and Delhi, too much. LeBron and Delhi, listen to that. Entirely too much for Golden State, who tried to make a push uh, at the start of the fourth, but it was just not enough. LeBron or Delhi scored or assisted on 78 of the Cavs' 96 points. So, Skip Bayless, um, was it more about the Cavs winning or Golden State losing? First of all, allow me to say, was I ever wrong about last night? In the end, I thought the Cavs won because of what they did. And first of all, and foremost today, I want to pay tribute to King James, who has had a history of some shaky late game free throw shooting and I have pointed out that history occasionally on this show I want to pay tribute because he stepped to the line he stepped up to the line the free throw line with 27 seconds left and again with 16 seconds left and he made all four huge clutch 
free throws. And all four of them were no doubters. They didn't trickle in. They didn't sort of grease in. Nope. He swished all four of them. And way to go, King. I respect the heck out of that. But obviously, obviously, the king was greatly aided once again by that little man named Delhi. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You got them started. <laughs> I know. I, I didn't mean to set them off. And Delhi made, once again, the play of the night. With two minutes and 20 seconds to go, I thought LeBron had gone a little passive, and all of a sudden it's just a one-point game, and Delhi goes and one off the glass. And as Steph said after the game, that was a huge turning point in the game because it sort of reversed the flow, got the crowd back into the game. And once again, Delhi saves another day. But now for my big picture point. In the end, big picture, I thought last night was more about what the Warriors didn't or couldn't do in the first three quarters. Because I never in my wildest dreams thought I would watch an offense that averaged 110 points during the regular season turn into an offensive, very offensive I might say, basket case of an offense. Do you realize that Golden State had 37 points at halftime and Klay Thompson this year in a game in January against Sacramento Sacramento scored 37 in one quarter by himself. Think about that. 37 at halftime. One man scored 37 in one game by himself. 55 through three quarters. And it, I, I told you yesterday, I thought Delhi would have Steph's number for three quarters, but that Steph would figure him out in the fourth quarter. And did Steph ever figure him out? But it was too little too late because I thought Steph's three killer late turnovers ended up taking Golden State out of their rally. So in the end, I, I, I pay tribute to LeBron and obviously to Della Vadova. But, but Stephen A., big picture, I thought it was more about what the Warriors could not do. Well, definitely it has something to do with what the Warriors couldn't do, but I think it's more importantly what they're not doing. Um, and need I remind you, not to toot my own horn, but you, but you looked at me like I was a psychopath when I told you that the Warriors would be held to 91 points. I believe that was the that exact was, number I picked. He did. And that's what they scored he last did. night. You actually gave you them know, too much credit. You know, 91 you know, points. Well, you, well, you, you were talking about they're they going to be held to 91 uh, points. But, but how lucky uh, were they? You know, well, and that's what happened. Steph Curry makes, what, five you know, threes in the fourth well, quarter well, to well, get him to 91? Well, 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 the final score is the final score. Oh, I didn't tell you how it was going to happen. Oh, okay. I just told you what you know was going to happen. You are a genius. Yeah, what kind I, of I admit it. Oh, no. You are a genius. You shouldn't sit there and say... <laughs> Don't call me a genius. Stephen Naismith will do just yeah. fine. That's fine. But here's the deal. But by the in way, all seriousness, it, it ain't over yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I talked about one yeah. game. Yeah, That's I, all. I, I, but in all seriousness, let's look at this and analyze it for what it is. LeBron James is absolutely terrific uh, for the most part. 40-12-8 and eight is, is what it is. Delhi was absolutely sensational for those first three quarters in terms of how he pestered mm -hmm. Steph Curry, he and did. he deserves a lot of credit. I'm not going to give him as much credit as you did for that three-point play because, good Lord, luck did play a significant role. Really? You're just, I, mean, I don't lost, know about lost, that. He lost control of the ball, threw it up there. So, like, so you didn't was, think he was calling glass on the play? I thought he shot it I off the it, backboard. I thought it was basketball's equivalent of a Hail Murray. That's what I really? thought. Really? Okay. Are you guys so, accepting that from him? I don't think. I I didn't think so. I know so. this much. Y'all better not join in with him interrupting me during my time of talking. Oh. You, I let you speak. You are Zip a genius. That's <laughs> enough. For one day. <laughs> the, the, the reality is, is that I thought that shot, that particular shot was lucky. Uh, but for the most part, he played a very effective game, and he deserves a lot of credit for that. Here's where things get very, very interesting for me, Skip. I'm looking at the Golden State Warriors, and for three quarters, I couldn't tell whether Steph Curry was disinterested or flat out petrified. I could not believe what I was watching. I could not believe that there was such an absence of aggression. And I was shocked. I, I was just stunned. I started tweeting about it. I, like, I cannot believe what I'm watching. And then he came alive before. I said, okay, now this is the Steph Curry mm. that I know. Yep. At least somebody who is in attack mode. I know that Tim Legler went on SportsCenter and said that, you know, opportunities were created for Steph Curry. He didn't take advantage of him. Yep. Skip. Listen, Steve Kerr, Alvin Gentry, and all of these boys know far more basketball than me. 
I didn't see it. I didn't see any adjustments. I see Steph Curry having to work entirely too hard for every shot he takes. And I don't see the adjustments being made by the Golden State Warriors to do anything about it. I look at Harrison Barnes and Draymond Green. Combined, two starters on your front line, two for 18. Stark. Very John Starks like. Wait, wait did Harrison out Barnes loud. play last night? Let me say that right now. On the floor? Harrison Barnes is a talent. We like him. I'm only talking about last night's performance. Yep. He should be ashamed of himself. He should be. That he's too talented I agree. to go 0 for 8. Yep. That's just embarrassing. And Draymond Green, who's one of my favorites, I believe in him. And even though I don't think he's a max player, I think he's a quality player. You know how much I love my man Tom Izzo. He's the best in college basketball. He's one of the best in college basketball. He's my favorite. Yep. And this man played for him. I am a Draymond Green fan. I'm going to look Draymond Green in the camera and I'm going to pose a challenge to him right now. My brother, you are costing yourself money with each passing game because nobody is going to give him the money he's coveting in the offseason but Golden yeah. State. And with each passing game, he is showing that David Lee should be the one in the starting lineup instead of him. Or they should be playing together because Bogut gives you nothing offensively. Bogut gives you something defensively, rim protector, etc. But offensively, he is as bogus as it gets. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. So now here we are with all of that. And I'm looking at this, and I'm shocked that we're in this position, not in terms of the two-to-one deficit, but how we've gotten to this point. Mm -hmm. LeBron James, with a sidekick known as Matthew Della Vadova, uh -huh. is beating the best team in basketball mm -hmm. all year long. Yep. And, to, and, and Thursday night's game four, it's game seven right. for the Golden State Warriors. They don't win tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. There is no way they are winning this series. This is what it's about right here. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. I am with you about what I saw in the first three quarters. Now, I'm going to give Delhi some credit. I thought he got in Steph's head in the first three quarters. You might be right about that. And, I mean, and maybe Steph got mad in the fourth quarter because he just started firing at will, which is when he's at his best. But Steve Kerr deserves a lot of blame for this, both as you suggest on offense, and then I brought this up on the show yesterday. I heard Tim and several analysts bring it up after the game. They are letting LeBron James control the pace by walking the basketball up the floor and then basically walking his defender down into the lane. And we all know what happens when LeBron James gets into the paint. Bad things he's happen living to there. the... He's living listen, there. He's living in the listen, paint. Listen, he, he, I don't know whether it's Bank of America or somebody else. Yeah. He called, got a mortgage in the lane, yeah. sitting there. He's paying sure. mortgage every yeah. game with it. I mean, yeah. he is living yeah. in the lane. And Golden State is doing nothing about it and here's the thing throw different looks at them i'm not saying that you trap them all the time because with lebron he's he's basically magic that can score points okay he's a magic johnson with the ability to score like he can and i'm just looking at the golden state warriors and i'm like do something different give him a different look mm -hmm. trap one minute throw a different man on them the next disrupt his rhythm mm -hmm. do something other than letting him do what he wants to do because when you throw the same thing at lebron james Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how great it is. If you throw the same thing Absolutely. at him, he will figure it out. <laughs> he already there has. Is no yeah. way. To, you yeah. have to throw something different <sighs> at him. And the Golden State Warriors have been throwing the same medicine in mm -hmm. his direction. And LeBron is sitting there going like, you know what? I've already figured this out, y'all. Yep. I don't get this. But I'm telling you, they've got to do something. I think trapping LeBron. Throwing different defensive looks at him would Just be one thing. Just make him give the basketball also, at least once. Also, make Cleveland. Make yeah. Cleveland do something different defensively. When David Lee is in that game, David Lee is no shot blocker. He's no rim protector. But he will get his body in front of mm -hmm. you, okay? But offensively, he's good in pick and roll situations. He can hit an elbow jump shot. Mm -hmm. He can attack the basket because he always rolls hard to the basket. And he forces you to pay attention. It's not an accident that Golden State's offense caught fire when David David Lee was in the game yep. because suddenly you can't just leave an Andre Iguodala alone or leave an Andrew Bogut alone or leave a Draymond Green alone. Yep. You got a lot of cats on Cleveland that were looking at Draymond Green and they respected him. But at the same time, they look at him as somebody who opens his mouth, talks a little bit of smack 
and they consider him a role player. Mm. So they're offended that a role player got so much lit. And what they said is, okay, you've been yapping all year long. Now show us what you have. Mm -hmm. We're going to take Curry away from this. Klay Thompson's only going to do but so much. We're going to force you, Draymond Green, to be the playmaker. Yep. And Draymond Green has not shown up. He is supposed to be Golden State's version of Matthew Della Vadova. Mm -hmm. And Matthew Della Vadova has completely outshined him sure. in the Energizer Bunny role that Matthew Della Vadova has played for Cleveland. That is what Draymond was supposed to be doing mm -hmm. for Golden State. He is not doing it. He is not showing up. And I'm... I, Harrison Barnes was so bad, he needs to forfeit his game check. I agree. I mean, I, this, I agree. listen, ladies and gentlemen, Harrison Barnes can play. He is a talent. To go 0 for 8 in the finals when they're daring you to do something with your talent? Yeah. What in God's name is that about? I mean, Draymond Green has been bad. But Harrison Barnes has been absent. There is an APB out for Harrison yeah. Barnes' game. Yeah. It, 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 I, I cannot I, I believe said, what I'm watching. I'm not watching. sure he was there last night. I cannot I believe what I'm watching. I think he started on LeBron, trying to guard LeBron, and LeBron would just dribble by him like he was a, a mannequin, right? Yeah, but, but the thing about it is, it's one thing for LeBron to be scoring on you. But when the Cleveland Cavaliers are stepping back and saying, show me what you got. With the talent that Harrison Barnes has, mm -hmm. it is embarrassing how awful he was. He's got to show up for game four, really. Mm -hmm. Seriously, he's better.